Hey guys, hope you're doing well and are getting ready to get back to the topic of how producers behave in a perfectly competitive market. And we're getting ready to conclude this, uh, this chapter. We only have a couple of more videos. So in this, video is what, in this video, what we're going to talk about is price elasticity of supply. Right? So similar to what we, when we talked about the demand curve, we said if, if a price of a good goes up, how much less do consumers buy? Because there's a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now that we've derived the supply curve, looking at how perfectly competitive uh, producers behave, we're going to ask how much more or less do they sell if the price changes. So in this case, unlike the demand curve, we know that the relationship is going to be positive. As the price of a good goes up, a particular firm is going to produce more goods. And as the price goes down, they'll produce less. So that link you should know from the previous few videos. But now the question is how much more? Right? So if our baker, if, the, if they're able to charge a higher price for cakes or pastries, how much more are they going to be willing to sell? So that's what we're going to talk about in, in this video. So one thing, just, you know, just to make sure that you are on the same page, when we talked about the supply curve, you should remember, and this is just supposed to be a review, that the difference between supply and quantity supplied is similar to the difference between demand and quantity demanded. So in terms of supply and quantity supplied, supply refers to the whole line. Quantity supplied refers to a particular point off, coming off of that line. So if the price is $2, a particular producer wants to sell six. If the price is one dollar, the producer wants to sell only three. So these three and six are QS. So these quantities, three and six, refer to quantity supplied. And supply refers to the whole line. It gives you the relationship between P and QS. So this is very similar to when we tried to uh, derive the demand curve, but I just wanted to make sure that you remember this before we proceed. All right, so price elasticity of supply now is going to be the percent change in quantity supplied divided by the percent change in price. So price elasticity of demand, if you remember, was percent change in QD over percent change in price. Now we are looking at how producers change their behavior when price changes. So this relationship was always negative. We know this relationship is going to be positive because when the price goes up, the producers are going to want to produce more. And if the price goes down, they're going to want to produce less. So for example, if the percent change in price is 2%, if price goes up by 2%, we know, I mean, we can calculate it on, from the supply curve, that the percent change in quantity supplied is going to go up. So if this number goes up by 10%, then what we say is that the price elasticity of supply is 5. And what that means is that as the price goes up by 1%, quantity supplied goes up by 5%. So producers are going to want to sell 5% more if price goes up by a percent or they want, they want to sell 5% less if price goes down by 1%. So it, they, you know, the, the direction is, is positive in terms of how much they want to sell uh, relative to what's happening to the price. All right, so again, you know, hopefully you, you, know, you remember everything in relation to the supply curve. This is just a you know, brief summary before we conclude this video. A quantity supplied is the amount that sellers are willing to sell uh, at a given price, and the law of supply states there's a positive relationship. And now, Price elasticity of supply tells us how severe the supply curve is going to react or how severely a producer is going to react when price changes. So the next thing we're going to talk about is just like this demand side is how many different kinds of you know, supply curves there are in terms of elasticity. If you understand the demand side of microeconomics, this should be not very hard. All right, so we're going to look at four cases. We're going to look at elastic supply curve, inelastic supply curve, and then the special cases of perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. Again, these terminologies should not be new. Now we're just applying it to the supply side. So you, know, you probably have observed I'm spending less time on this as I did on the demand side, and that's because that was the first time you were introduced to this. So you, you, know, you had to understand it very thoroughly. Now if you're clear on that, it should not be very hard. So if you're not clear on elasticity, uh, you know, go review. Uh, the, the, you know, the video on uh, price elasticity of demand and then get back to this. So an elastic supply curve is where if the price changes a small amount, quantity changes by a lot. So you should know in terms of steepness or, or flatness, the line's going to be very flat. Where if the price goes up a small amount, the amount of quantity that producers want to sell goes up a lot. Again, same reasoning. This, you know, is this uh, elastic means there's a lot of room for producers to adjust. So when the price changes a little bit, quantity adjusts by a lot. Right, so hopefully you remember that from the demand side. Now we're just applying it here. Inelastic supply curve is where if the price goes up by the same amount, quantity supply changes by a much smaller percent. Right, in terms of the number, elasticity, if a, if a supply curve is elastic, the elasticity is going to be more than 1. And if the supply curve is inelastic, the elasticity is going to be between 0 and 1. 
These numbers are always going to be positive, but it's going to be between 0 and 1 if it's inelastic. And then perfectly elastic is if the line is horizontal. This looks identical to the demand side. Both demand and supply would be horizontal if the, supply, uh, the curve is perfectly elastic. And the uh, perfectly inelastic supply curve is going to be where the line is vertical. So you can change the price as much as you want. The quantity supply is not going to change. And so hopefully you're comfortable with both what it means to measure price elasticity of supply and what the different kinds are in terms of uh, you know, uh, elastic, inelastic, perfectly inelastic, and perfectly elastic. So one more thing, and then we are done with this video, is what, I'm sorry, that's, you know, that I just said that. So the next thing we're going to look at is what determines whether the supply curve is going to be more elastic or more inelastic. And there are only going to be two factors here. One is how easy it is for a producer to change their output. So if it's very easy for a producer to say if the price goes up, we can produce a lot more very easily, then the curve is going to be very elastic. On the other hand, if it's not very easy for them to adjust production, the supply curve is going to be very inelastic. Right? So think about examples as I'm going through this. So for example, beachfront land, right? so property that's on in the beachfront is going to be very inelastic. Because even if the price of beachfront properties goes up, the producers cannot just create more beachfront land right? because it's fixed. It's fairly fixed. On the other hand, producing you know, potato chips, for example, or, or chocolates or other manufactured goods is very elastic or books. Right, because if the price of books goes up, it's very easy for the producers to just get more paper and ink and produce more books. So one factor is how easy it is for a producer to adjust their production based on uh, various factors. And then the other one is time period. So this is again similar to the, what we talked about in the demand side, is if the producers have more time to adjust, the supply will be more elastic. And if they have very short amount of time to adjust, then the, demand, the supply is going to be more inelastic. So again, this factor is the same, same thing uh, when we apply to the demand side, uh, the other one is new, is if how easy it is for the producer to use their inputs. So you know, make sure you understand both. Both demand and supply are more elastic in the long run and more inelastic in the short run. So that, you know, make sure you remember that from uh, you know, the topic on demand side uh, as well. So in this video, we've talked about price elasticity of supply, what it means, how you measure it numerically, and what the graphs look like. And then finally, what are some of the determinants uh, which, we, which might lead to a supply curve to be more elastic or less elastic. So make sure you review that and you know, we'll get back to the next video.